Hello and welcome to another Wolf Time gaming video. Today I'm going to be painting up Osaw Miniatures Beaver Mercenary for using Burrows and Badgers. If you haven't seen their game, go and check them out. I'll link it down below. Absolutely fantastic game. Fantastic miniatures. They're, they're all really, really nice. Really, really well detailed as well. Uh, before we get started on the painting though, let's get the kettle on. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is actually, once you've constructed it, put them together. I put a little bit of gravel on the bottom there, it's always fine sand, uh, just as a little bit of interest, so it's just not the plain base. I always do that um, with the, with my miniatures. I, I think it really adds that, you know, that fully immersive experience to put a nice base on them, put a bit of grass on. But we'll go through that in a minute anyway. Uh, but the first thing I did was um, base coat it with a Games Workshop spray called Wraithbone. It gives a really nice uh, coverage on there. It also is really, really thin, so it allows the contrast paints to, to drop into the recesses nicely and works really well with your miniatures as well. Also, with going a lighter colour rather than black, you can actually see a lot of the detail before you start. But let's get started on the colours. Okay, so with this mini, I actually started with the base, which is a little bit unusual for me. I like to start with the, the model itself, but I thought it would be, be a little bit different with this one and get the base painted first. Uh, to do that, uh, I started with the Rhinox Hide, which is a base colour brown coat from Games Workshop. It's a good good base brown, a really nice dark one, so you can build up the colours from there. I always like to start with a dark colour and work my way up, um, and this is ideal for basing and things like that, really. Uh, you can add lots of uh, other sorts of um, browns on there then to make it look really, really nice. So the, the second part, I, essentially I dry brushed in Mournfang Brown, which is a, really, uh, a much lighter brown and it just highlights all those little edges just in case any of the flock and that drops off so it looks a little bit more natural and not that sort of uh, block. So the uh, the actual edges of the base is done with the Corvus Black, you can use any black paint for this, this Corvus Black is really, really, really thin, you can see it's gone quite streaky straight away, and that's put a couple of coats on this as well. Uh, I've also painted the rock that I've dropped on the base there as well with the Corvus Black, giving it a nice base coat um, to, to add a little bit of grey on. Once the, the, you've actually painted the rock, the, the Corvus Black actually dries really quick, so you could probably go straight into the uh, second coat around the base there, and it just finishes it off. I then added a little bit of administratum grey onto that rock as well, just to highlight a few of the edges and things, and make it look really, really nice. So the first colour on the miniature I've actually gone for is uh, Skeleton Horde. It's a contrast paint. It's a really good quality paint. Uh, drops into the recesses really, really nicely. And I've done that essentially around the trousers area because the trousers you don't really see very well, but I didn't want them to, to go quite dark. I wanted it to stand out a little bit from um, the, the metals and things we're going to use. So I decided to go with this tan colour just to essentially show it off a little bit more. It allows uh, some of the details around the legs to show off. I also did around the mouth and the the eyes as well just so it, it they, they were highlighted and if you look at um, a little bit of a look at some of the pictures of beavers online and they don't really have it but some of them do have a lighter area around the mouths but uh, I just wanted to add something a little bit in, of an interest really I didn't want it to be like a, a brown coat all over and that was it and talking about a brown coat you can actually see I've already started this one now it's contrast wildwood uh, it's a nice brown it's quite a light brown um, I did consider using this for the base originally but I wanted to go with the fur and I didn't want it all to blend which is why I went for a darker base and using the actual wildwood on the fur it's really nice and it, it uh, allow using these contrast paints allow the the miniature to actually come to life with the with the detail as well it drops into the recesses really really nicely and looks really effective as well I would advise that uh, you, when you're using the contrast paints, just before you you know you put your paintbrush down and finish off, just go around it just to make sure that it's you've caught all the areas. Because one one thing that I find is when you've done like a lighter coat, it can pull away from the miniature slightly, which leaves white areas. And then when you do go over that once it's dry, it can leave quite a darker patch or a darker colour um, that you're trying to get, and it doesn't actually look that great. So just make sure you go around it and just just touch up, up all those little areas that may. 
and that's the same for any sort of contrast paint that you use as well uh, the red that you can see me using now is contrast blood angels red uh, it's a really nice quite bright red um, looks really really effective and one of the benefits of using these contrast paints is that you don't have to actually highlight anything if you don't want to I haven't on this miniature and you'll see at the end it, it looks absolutely fantastic just by using the contrast paints on their own uh, just take your time going around the miniature. You can see I've gone over a few areas uh, by accident a little bit on the shoulder pad just a second ago there. But that doesn't really matter because I'll be going into this with a silver paint anyway um, and just giving it a com complete coat. Um, next bit I did was again pulled out the Corvus Black. I could have done this earlier but I wanted to do the fur first which is so essentially around the nose. A little just dot on the eyes there just to make a, the um, it, them stand out so they're not like a bright white colour. Uh, and then just around the shield. Uh, what I liked about the shield, um, going this red and black, is it, it was quite distinctive. It really stood out nicely. I did consider going over the, the black with a silver and a dry brush just to, to make it look, look a little bit more metal. But I think this real sort of dark black colour against the red looks really effective. At the same time, I also did the uh, the hilt of his weapon as well. So he's got like a little bit of what looks like leather around the weapon. Uh, again, I usually do uh, pink or red for these because I think it stands out. But with the, the, the red of his clothing, I didn't want it all to blend together. So I decided to go with black. And actually, it makes it stand out really nicely and looks really effective. And I'll definitely be doing that in the future. I also realised I hadn't done his tail at this point and uh, did that, they used the Corvus black on the, the tail as well. Just because the, the black um, colour looks really effective, it looks really nice a, a, against the rest of the fur. Um, and if you look on, online, you'll actually see a lot of the, um, the, the tails are look a black colour anyway or a dark grey. I started picking out all the leather details now using Mournfang Brown. It's the colour we used earlier on uh, in the video where we dry brushed the base. It's exactly the same colour so we don't need to go and get more paint. Difference is instead of dry brushing it like we did on the base earlier, we're, I'm actually painting it now onto um, all the leather areas, all the belts and pouches and things. And I've gone with the same colour throughout to give that sort of standard effect. Um, so he looks like he's got it all from the same place. He hasn't used lots of different types of leather. It's all the same thing basically. So it gives a bit of uniformity to all his uh, accoutrements um, that he's got hanging off him. So the, the one part that did actually take me a while was the silver. I, I went with Lead Belcher, which I, I go with all the time. Uh, it's a really nice silver, and it looks great when you put a little bit of Norn Oil on it as well. And it, I just did the coated every part of the metal with this. So it's all his chain mail, his plate armor, the uh, the actual head of the weapon itself, and the end as well, the hilt, um, just at the ball of, uh, of it. I did consider going with the gold on this, but just for ease, really, I just kept it with the silver. And it, it actually looks quite effective with the, the silver on both ends and looks like it, it, it's quite nice. It doesn't look too ornamental. Um, and that's what I didn't want with this this model. He, he, while he's a mercenary and he's paid for his service, I didn't want him to look like he had a lot of money, um, and which is why he's obviously fighting for it sort of thing. I imagine he doesn't really like fighting, but he's forced to do that to, to earn a living, and it's what he's good at. So he's got uh, sort of standard equipment, really, nothing too fancy. Again, just take your time with this. Don't go too mad with the with the silver. You don't want to get it on any of the, the areas that you've already put the contrast paint. What you could have done is gone. With, I could have gone with the silver first and then contrast after, and that would have stopped me going over any areas that you don't want to. But you don't need to if you take your time. I've skipped this slightly just because it was taking quite a while to actually get that silver done, and you don't want to watch me just paint silver all evening. I again pulled the Administratum Grey um, out just to give a little bit of a highlight just onto the, the weapon on, on the leather we talked about earlier that was black. Um, you can see I went to quite light with this. It was a little bit lighter than I wanted it so I darkened it down a little bit later as well. I then picked out all like his nails, um, his claws essentially and on his feet as well uh, with Xandri dust um, just, to, just to highlight them and make them stand out a little bit more from the rest of the, the, the body really. One of the final stages of painting the mini really was the, the null oil, and I, I completely coated all the silver with null oil. I, I really like uh, the effect it has uh, on the lead belt tree. It makes it look like a real metal, really, rather than this shiny silver colour. You, it adds some definition to it. It adds some shading to it as well, and really, it looks really nice. I also did the black area as well on the on the weapon that we just talked about that went a bit light, and it blended that grey into the the black really, really nicely. I did the, the teeth at this point as well, um, just so you added a little bit of shading around the teeth areas because they were left uh, the base colour um, and it started to look really, really effective. 
Somewhere else you could have done as well was the uh, all the browns and things, which is what I used. I used null null again on all those lighter brown areas, just to darken it down and add some shading to the actual leather work. Uh, but you don't need to, or you could use another colour like Agrax Earthshade or anything like that really to darken it down. But null null worked really well in this instance. So that was the actual miniature painted. So I just needed to do do the actual basing of it. And to do that, first stage was essentially coat the base in PVA. Not all of it, but just uh, just a few areas. And I dropped a little bit of static grass on there. Um, a lot of people use the um, like these plastic things that essentially make the grass stand up. But I wanted it to look a little bit messy. And I added a couple of tufts on there just to have, add a little bit of standing grass and a few flowers just to finish it off. One thing I am going to do here that you'll see is essentially put more uh, PVA glue down and coat it over the top. And essentially what it does is just hold, it, hold down all those bits and pieces that you've stuck on there. I do recommend leaving it overnight to dry, but that's him finished. Um, you can give it a quick coat of um, Unitorian varnish or anything like that really to make sure any all the paint stays on and none of it flakes off or breaks off if you knock him around. Um, but essentially the miniature's finished. I'm really pleased with how he turned out. I think he looks absolutely fantastic and I can't wait to get him on the tabletop. I hope you enjoyed the video guys. Make sure you subscribe to see any more. I've got lots more videos on the way. Make sure you do check out Oathsworn's um, website as well. Link below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.